the Saturday Vistan, I had presented my view of single-use plastic. That debate holds center stage of all countries of the world. And a lot has been written on the ways to recycle and destroy it. The ban includes the manufacture, usage, sale, transport, distribution, wholesale, retail, retail sale, storage, and import of plastic bags, disposable plastic products, and thermocol. Be that as it may, in today's episode, I'll talk about another waste that has gigantic proportions, especially compounded by the digital push. I am referring to the e-waste that we generate and its dimensions. Most of the e-waste is processed informally. However, informal processing of e-waste leads to adverse human health effects and environmental pollution. Electronic scrap components such as CPUs contain potentially harmful products such as lead, cadmium, beryllium or brominated flame retardants. Recycling and disposal of e-waste involves significant risk to health workers and community communities and great care must be taken to avoid the unsafe exposure in recycling operations and leaking of materials such as heavy metals from landfills and incinerator ashes. Many of these elements are carcinogenic and, or they cause cancer. What is electronic waste? or e-waste. It is the discarded electronic or electronic devices such as refrigerators, washing machines, computers, printers, televisions, iPods and what not, mobiles, televisions and many many others. Any used electronics, resale, salvage, recycling or disposal are considered e-waste and is the most rapidly growing waste problem in the world. In a new e-waste report released by the United Nations University, global electronic waste has reached record proportions, record levels. Almost 50 million tons of e-waste is generated every year and expected to grow further fueling concerns about its growing risks to public health, resource conservation and the environment. Friends, this is equivalent to throwing about 800 laptops every single second. Of total e-waste, approximately one quarter or about 10 million tons is made up of personal digital devices such as computers, displays, smartphones, tablets and TVs. Household appliances as well as heating and cooling equipment account for the reminder. India is the fifth largest e-waste provider at 2 million tons each year in the world where the government, public sector and the private sector companies generate nearly 75% of the electronic waste with the contribution of individual household being only 16%. Over 95% of the e-waste is treated and processed in the majority of urban slums of the country. That is where the informal working that I spoke of comes in. Here, the untrained workers carry out dangerous procedures without any personal protective equipment. Now, the developed world has devious ways of protecting themselves. They, you know, shift a lot of e-waste. They ship it out to Asia 
or Africa who recycling. This may sound good, but in fact, it's just an easy and cheap way of getting rid of the enormous amounts of e-waste that's generated in their countries. A lot of it is simply burnt. That emits gases which are extremely carcinogenic. There's an example. The soil of the Chinese e-waste site Giyu records some of the world's highest con concentrations of dioxins and heavy metals. Water contained lead 2,400 times higher than safe levels. Many children in India work in the recycling yards, both in the formal and the informal sectors. A vicious cycle is then sustained almost as a matter of fact. Villagers cannot grow their own food because the soil is heavily polluted. To survive, they must work in the recycling industry, further degrading their health and surrounding environment, resulting in birth defects, damage to central and peripheral nervous systems, distorted blood compositions, damage to lungs, liver, kidneys, and even death. Children working in the recycling yards are at much higher risk for damaging their health and that of the adults. Friends, are we creating a monster of a health hazard? Mary Shelley in her novel, The Modern Prometheus, said, a good 150 years back, you know, she said the story of Victor Frankenstein, a young scientist who creates a grotesque sapient creature in an unorthodox scientific experiment. Are we bringing her story to life in the 21st century? Are we creating another Frankenstein? Though the third industrial revolution driven by electronics has given us not only several worldly comforts, but it seems to have created a modern Frankenstein. E-waste isn't just an end of life issue. It's not as simple as throwing away the waste as soon as the expiry date is over. What must be done to curb the minis? There are some methods. For a start, manufacturers must provide take-back programs. They should call back the electronic equipment once the expiry is over or once they stop functioning, which can move a great number of products into proper recycling or reuse programs that the companies have. Extended product life criteria must be defined so their entry could be delayed into the waste cycle or the waste system. Education and awareness is as important as the need for disposing of e-waste. We as citizens you know, also need to play an important role. The state must facilitate setting up recycling facilities both in the public and in the private domain. Once the collection reaches the recycling facility, the process is extremely complicated. Most electronic waste goes through so-called, you know, recycling systems, which not only receives 95 to 98 percent by weight of all the e-waste passed through it, but ensures that any data left on the hard drives and memories are thoroughly destroyed. Then, batteries and copper is extracted. Most of the items are shredded into very small pieces. Now, the small debris is shaken to ensure that it is evenly spread out on the conveyor belt, which carries it. Before it gets broken down, even more, it becomes finer particles. The dust extracted is disposed of in an environmentally friendly way using magnets, steel 
and iron are removed from the debris aluminum copper brass they are separated from <coughs> the non metallic content and water is used to separate plastic from the glass content the once divided all the raw materials can be reused resold a small ray of hope however is for the new generation tco certified electronics gadgets launched in 2016 manufacturers need to declare the amount of recycled content in their certified products it ensures that they use the recycled content now for some numbers as reported by statista very very interesting 57.4 million tons metric tons of e waste was generated in 2021 the total is growing by an average of 2 metric tons every year there are over 347 metric tons of recycled unrecycled e waste on the earth as of 2022 and china us and india produce the most e waste only 17.4% of the e waste is known to be collected and properly recycled estonia norway and iceland have the highest e waste recycling rates and the e waste recycling market was valued at 50000 million in 2020 dollars Now, whereas the first graph shows the global e-waste produced, the second one shows the region-wise e-waste. A little understanding of those graphs will tell you the magnitude of the problem. The numbers are staggering indeed. Lowering the amount of electronics entering the waste system and improving the end-of-life handling. are essential for building a more circular economy demand of electronic products in india has grown exponentially in the recent times average index of industrial production of computer electronic and optical products for the year 2122 is 104 and has grown by 12.7% and exports of electronic goods is valued at almost 2000 million dollars in october 22 and shows a growth of 38% from exports in october 21 indian appliances and consumer electronics industry is double you know it it has grown to be double to 1.48 lakh rupees crore rupees 1.48 lakh crore rupees by 2025 hence this is a good reason to manage electronic and electronic waste and the other e waste well e waste trade and recycling alliances provide employment to many people in india around 25000 workers including children are involved in crude dismantling units in delhi alone where 10 to 20000 tons of e waste is handled every year by bare hands not even gloves this must stop and change to more scientific methods there are new employment opportunities as well through reverse logistics processing e waste all of them must be exploited more and more companies are making wealth from waste and in the process saving the environment from devastation the real mantra however is reduce reuse and recycle reduce the generation of e waste through smart handling and good maintenance reuse still functioning electronic equipment by donating it to the needy now recycle those products that cannot be repaired 
it's time to act now for both the citizens and the government lest we need to create new cemetery cities new cemeteries to bury our e waste that would be a disaster we have not bargained for friends this is a story for this saturday with the hope that we will be more responsible to ourselves and to our environment i will end this episode however with a promise to return next saturday with another interesting episode until then thank you dhanyawad and namaskar